All right, our guy checking in from the arena. And uh, he's also, as we said at the very top, the award-winning. Wow, well, here we go. Journalist. <laughs> and uh, congratulations, Kyle, on, on the award. Well-deserved. And we know how selfless you are when you talk about all of us. So before you give myself and Derek any credit, we're giving you the credit of uh, how fantastic you are, which is why we wanted to work with you when we started this whole this whole thing. So congratulations, man, on the, uh, a great achievement and well-deserved. Well, thank you. And I will accept it, but, you know, obviously all about the team. So I consider it not just a us win, but a company win, and hopefully many more of those to come. Uh, before you guys ask me any questions, I want to let you in on a very funny moment that happened tonight the end of the press conference. I'm not sure if you saw my Twitter at all. Um, Paul Reed got asked directly, just, hey, look, good second half, guys rallied. How do you bottle up what happened in the second half and carry that into New York on Sunday? I'm going to read you the direct quote. He says, just knowing that the referees are going to be the referees and we're going to have to beat them too. Ooh. So we got to already be expecting that. <laughs> And then to add on to it, Kelly Oubre comes in, and it must have been two, three minutes later. So very little time has gone by at this point. And he gets asked the same question by the same reporter, and he goes, oh, I already heard about this question. <laughs> so PR was already on the case. Like, hey, make sure you don't hard left turn into a complaint about the officials and get fined <laughs> over that. So I don't know why Paul decided to do that, but... We got a good chuckle out of it here. So, you know, uh, watch out for the uh, the ref assignments for a Sunday night against the New York <laughs> Knicks at MSG, I guess. Mm. What are your thoughts on that, Derek? <laughs> I mean, the refs were bad. You like mentioned said, it a little I while ago. I really yeah. don't like complaining about refs because yep. you miss calls throughout the game just because some of them happen in high-profile moments don't make them more impactful. That being said... He was freaking out of bounds when he threw the ball off of his head. It was clear as day, yes. and there were two blown calls right before then. That was frustrating. Yeah. Was campaign restricting the view, though, laying on the floor right there where they couldn't see his foot? I, I don't know. Yeah. Get the call right. I yeah. don't care. I know. Get the call right. <laughs> Kyle, Taylor two halves, man. Taylor yeah. two halves. First half down by 35. They come back, erase that deficit, get as close as five. And with some opportunities there with the score, down by five there late in the fourth quarter, but unable to, to overcome it all. What were your thoughts of, again, two halves, two different games? Yeah, look, like I, I think overall, and I can get into Nick Nurse's view on everything. Overall, I wasn't displeased from an effort perspective. I do think even as it got out of hand in the first half, there were still flashes of – Guys crashing the boards, get, going after loose balls, so on and so forth. I do think the defense obviously was a problem, and that's what Nick hit on after the game. He said that their defensive discipline was terrible and they weren't making them feel them at all. No, they didn't execute what their scheme was heading to, into the game. Like the, I, I would say tonight is probably – the maddest I've seen Nick after a game and he wasn't up here like yelling and screaming or anything and he didn't throw anyone under the bus but it was very clear it was like the the disappointed dad press conference sitting there like thought we could jump shoot our way into a a lead to open the game and we got what we deserve we didn't play our brand of basketball like that sort of deal and it took him quite a while to get over here so I, I would imagine there were a few words exchanged in the locker room and look i would say you there are no moral victories here right like this is not a, a up-and-coming team this is a bunch of veterans that need to right the ship and hold things down without joel without tyrese and some of these other guys but i at least give them credit for figuring it out at halftime kelly Oubre said uh, he was worried they were going to get booed out of the city entirely and, and so that was a big motivator for him coming into the third and fourth quarter. But look, I'm sure you guys have hammered this, as we have said on, on several other podcasts up to this point. They just don't have the guys right now. Like This is not a team that is built to win games with any regularity. 
they're going to have to get some some good breaks. Like New Orleans is not as good as they made them look in the first half, but that's a pretty solid playoff team, or at least like playoff hopeful, depending on how the West shakes out. And they got beat up pretty good. And once New Orleans let off the gas, that was the only time that they were able to get back into the game. So in terms of, you know, they shot two for 20 from three in the second half or in the first half, a lot better in the second. I don't remember exactly what it is, but a lot better. Do you think it was just shots going in or was it, do you think the shots were being generated better? Because Nick talked about that, you know, earlier before the game of, you know, previous game, we were just driving in the paint, getting rejected all the time. There were a lot of driving kick opportunities. How do you think they executed? I guess is what I would ask. I mean, slightly better. Some of that is also because they got more stops in the second half, right? Like you can get into early offense, transition Mm -hmm. offense, and get downhill, which the big problem for these guys right now, what are they supposed to do in the half court, right? Like if Tobias Harris can't win an isolation matchup, you're essentially asking someone like Kyle Lowry, who Kyle Lowry of – six years ago great like have him run the half court offense drive kick set guys up kyle lowry without an advantage creator next to him what is he supposed to do he's 37 years old he doesn't have the burst he can't get by people and so he's relegated to either he's mostly a catch and shoot guy or he's not doing much and so it is what it is like campaign can get downhill generate looks for himself but it's tough for him to create for others. Tobias Harris, not a creator for others. So it's a lot of guys that are, I wouldn't say by design, but they're isolated type of guys, reliant on a Maxi, a Joel Embiid, or people like that. And once you elevate them into these roles, it's just tough. So if they can get stops and avoid having to generate offense against set defenses, like zone gave them trouble for stretch of this stretches of this game tonight right and you're not going to face zone if you're running after a miss like it's just harder to get back and get set up in a two three if you're out on the break so i i think a lot of it comes down to that and we've hammered that a hundred times right that the defensive struggles are real for this group it's hard to expect them given the personnel to be good on defense but i look they were bought in and i give i give tobias a lot of of flack right like i have not enjoyed his defensive effort he stopped zion at the rim multiple times tonight like guys i think we're wanting to be better and kind of overshoot where they've been on defense there's just you you can't expect them to do it for 48 minutes given the personnel that they have right Uh, speaking of that personnel they're much better when tyrese max is on the floor Uh, you and Derek were sitting courtside there for his workout Uh, Before the game, he sat on the bench during the game as well. So the lights weren't too bad for, you know, overcoming the the concussion protocol thing. That guitarist national anthem guy might have, look, if he doesn't play Sunday, I'm going to point some fingers at the (laughs) loudest opening riff. Were you there at that point? That was loud. That was like, yeah, that That completely threw me off. That was really loud. That was really loud. And I listen to my music as loud as any single person I know. And that was like, I, I feel the inside of my head rattling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with that, uh, how did you feel he looked just going through a normal workout? And uh, what what did Nick Nurse say before you guys even had a chance to sit there and watch that workout? Yeah. So Nick said he's progressing through the concussion protocol. I I think he's through maybe the first step or two, which is are the symptoms gone at a resting state? And, And now we're at how does he respond after a workout like that? So like he looked fine. Like He's going through his normal paces, as far as I can tell, in the workout. What we don't know is how does Tyrese Maxey feel right now at, at 10.50 on Friday night, or how does he feel tomorrow morning after the workout, after he sleeps and, and goes home and, and what have you. So that's going to be the test here. And if he gets through that, uh, as far as I can remember, that's kind of the most important step to getting back. It's one of the final thing so nick seemed fairly optimistic but there have been a lot of times this year where nurse has sounded optimistic and then the guy has missed like four more games so i i don't want to lead anybody astray and be like oh yeah he's definitely going to play sunday so sounds good looks good we'll see Uh, it's i feel like that's the 
the slogan of the 23-24 Sixer season? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I don't know if I have, that was, you. we were sitting there going like, well, what notes can you actually take from the first half? Because that was some of the, the worst effort I've seen. I Would you say that's the worst effort? Not effort, but worst performance you've seen in the half since you've been on the beat? One of them, for sure. I, I'd have to go back and really dig through the archives. Because I was trying to think that, about cause... that. The only one I can remember that compared was San Antonio in 2015, and I think that was probably just before you started. Yeah, that, yeah you started I mean, in 2017. I was blogging and what yeah. have you. But, yeah, I wasn't actually was like full-time. Yeah, so it's the worst one I can remember. I, it's one that I, I understood it as it was happening. But it's still like for people who are spending their Friday nights either at home, at a bar, paying money to come to the game. Yeah. It doesn't make it any less frustrating for them that this is the product they're getting right now. So like I, I know we all try to be voices of reason, but I want people to be to hear this and be sure that like I hear you and I get you. Like nobody wants to watch this. The Sixers certainly don't want to put on performances like this, but it's tough sledding right now. So as I keep saying, please get well soon, Tyrese, so that we all have <laughs> <laughs> something exciting to watch around here. We all silly like the mayor. 